night, guys. It is a hot, sticky midsummer day here in mid to April. Yeah, on oh, this steamy. It is a Monday. It is a Monday afternoon. April 15th, 2024. 20, April 15th. I know there is supposed to be something that I'm doing. I'm supposed to be doing today. Some sort of deadline. Oh, yes. It is uh, time to wish our friend, Sister Sandy. Sister Sandy, a happy birthday on this lovely Monday, April 15, 2024. And guys, uh, I have no idea where I found the energy to do my weekly Dump the Trumpy Roundup rant today. I did this whole fucking rant. Get up and find the camera had conked out. So now... I get to start this whole motherfucking rant again if this camera, this computer, I don't give a fuck what craps out. There will be no dump the Trump the uh, roundup rant because, you know, why do I do this to myself? Uh, obviously, uh, we all know that every single, uh, it, it, at least, eligible voter in the United States has already made up their mind whether or not they're going to vote for the single most reprehensible human being on the planet. <coughs> there is nothing anybody could say to a Trump tard from this point forward. As Donald Trump says, he could walk out into the middle of Fifth Avenue, shoot somebody dead, uh, have a murder conviction, and it, he would not lose one vote. Uh, the die is cast. This motherfucker is going to be the next president. We can all thank Joe Biden for that, and we're just going to have to deal with it. Uh... But anyway, I guess this is just cathartic. And so for the second time today, I'm going to bring you this week's Dump the Trump Hive Roundup Rand. And I always like to start with a quote from the horse's ass himself. This is the Donald Trump horse's ass quote of the week. Donald Trump on Saturday called himself called himself, quote, perhaps, perhaps the most honest guy almost in the world, close quote. He is almost in the world. Donald Trump is almost in the world. Not quite. Uh, and so, of course, he makes this absurd statement to this cheering throng of his Trump tard voters. He sits up there and, and, and makes, a, makes a, a statement much more absurd than the moon is made of green cheese and hundreds of these clueless fucking morons uh, cheering on Donald Trump, labeling himself perhaps the most honest guy almost in the world. Trump, according to the Washington Post tally, Donald Trump made 30,573 false or misleading claims during the four years of his presidency. He was also convicted of fraud in February uh, in a case that could ultimately cost him nearly half a billion dollars in fines and his claim of being uh, perhaps the most honest guy almost in the world came just two days before he heads to trial on Monday in his first criminal court case with three other criminal cases pending in other courts. 
And of course, uh, today is the Monday they're talking about, so it wasn't hard to do a dump the Trump the high roundup rant because the number one biggest story on planet Earth begins today with Trump's history-making hush money trial begins with the challenge of picking a jury. There you go. Trying to find a jury of Donald Trump's peers. Are, are there 12 people on the planet uh, that, that if you're already, well, I guess if Donald Trump was the 13th most repugnant human being on the planet, maybe we could find 12 peers. But Donald Trump is peerless. You could never get a jury of 12 people being Donald Trump's peers. Donald Trump has no peer. He is the single most reprehensible human being walking the planet today. So in case you are living uh, under a rock, let's just read the three, fir the, the three first paragraphs of the number one story on planet Earth today. Donald Trump arrived Monday, meaning this morning, at a New York court for the start of jury selection in his hush money trial, marking a singular moment in American history as the former president answers to criminal charges that he falsified business records in order to stifle stories about his sex life. Uh, the, the first trial of any former U.S. commander-in-chief will unfold as Trump vies to reclaim the White House, uh, creating a remarkable split-screen spectacle of the Republican nominee spending his days as a criminal defendant while also campaigning for the presidency. He has blended those roles over the last year by presenting himself on the campaign trail and on social media as a victim of politically motivated prosecutions designed to derail, derail his candidacy. Uh, after a norm-shattering presidency shadowed by years of investigations, the trial amounts to a historic courtroom reckoning for Trump, who now faces four indictments, charging him with crimes ranging from hoarding classified documents to plotting to overturn an election Yet, the political stakes are less clear since a conviction would not preclude Donald Trump from becoming president again, and because the allegations in this case have been known for years. Yes, uh, and, and this is pretty much proof of what Donald Trump was saying, that he could shoot somebody and kill somebody in, in the middle of, uh, 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 of Fifth Avenue, and not one Trump tard w would change their vote. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know if Donald Trump was convicted of raping a, a maggot's own mother with these maggots. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you compare this shit to the, uh, to the famous cigar incident with uh, Bill Clinton getting impeached uh, for fucking around with some intern, that thing with Gary Hart uh, completely 
losing uh, any chance, you know, getting tossed out of the election for having some whore uh, on a boat with him. Uh, not even to mention JFK and, and, and all of that. It, it, it makes no difference uh, in, in anymore. Uh, that and, and, and the deal here again, as most of the, my rants are, and they're not about Donald Trump. They are these rants are about any fucking clueless moron who would vote for this person. If any other president up until now, any up until now, uh, w w was going through this, they would have no chance uh, of, of being elected president. No chance. Y yet this motherfucker, uh, what is it about this guy? Uh, we'll talk more about this in, uh, in our final roundup. Now this long one from Slate Magazine, uh, I'm not really going to get into, but I, you know, it's really the question uh, here. The most dangerous time in 2024 will be just after the election. And, you know, what this long article interviewing people and talking about is... Uh, uh, on the ridiculous hair thin chance that Donald Trump loses the election. What the fuck is that going to look like? Uh, it, depending on who you talk to, it, it's going to be January 6th all over again, uh, all the way up to the firing shot of a new civil war breaking out in this country. If Donald Trump loses, it will make whatever happened on January 6th uh, look like a bad hair day. We very well could enter uh, a civil war on November 5th. If, uh, if Donald Trump loses this election. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I certainly uh, don't deny this, but of course Donald Trump is not going to lose the election, so we're going to have to deal with the other side of the coin. It makes no difference. It makes no difference if Donald Trump wins or loses the election at this point. Either way, we are fucked. Either way. I do not know if anywhere in these articles they're talking about a repeat of January 6th or a new civil war. Uh, if Joe Biden loses the election, I'm not sure the Biden tards are going to start a new civil war if their little hero uh, loses or not. Uh, that you better believe that November 5th, 2024, uh, which is National Donut Day, could be one of, could go down in history, uh, you, know, you know, as one of the big dates in American history when the new civil war breaks out uh, in, in this country. The, the bloodbath that Donald Trump uh, is talking about, and it could commence right here in Donellan, Florida. Uh, but we're going to, let's look at two from uh, from medium.com. I uh, need to see if that's some urgent. I've been waiting for a phone call, but of course my Skype is broken. Uh, so I'll have to wait for a minute. Okay, uh, let's start with this fellow named Martin Edick, E D I C. The Evolution of a Psychopath 
And what does that make those who follow him? Uh, you know, this is, you, you know, Barton, uh, you know, kind of looking at the same thing. So many, you know, Donald Trump is what he is. There is no changing Donald Trump. But Donald Trump is only as, as strong as the confederacy of dunces who surround him. Uh, there would be no Donald Trump if there were not Trump tarred maggots. Uh, it, it is the uh, whatever it is, however many of these motherfuckers there are blindly following uh, th 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 this asshole. They are the real issue here. It's not the buffoon in chief. Uh, it, it's why anybody uh, would uh, vote for him. Uh, take away Martin Edick. Donald Trump posted a picture of Joe Biden hogtied in the back of a pickup truck. Obviously fake. But I am having a hard time wrapping my head around why anyone in their right mind would do something like that. The obvious answer could be two things. The poster could be a pre-adolescent boy, or he could be a crazy person or even psychotic. Either way, this is not normal behavior for a 77-year-old man, much less a presidential candidate. And if this appeals to a large number of Americans, which it does, we have a serious problem, a mental health problem. <coughs> you know, it's not just anybody voting for Donald Trump obviously is mentally ill. There is no explanation why somebody who is not mentally ill would vote for the for for this uh, for this fucking lunatic. Uh, I'd really like to think it won't, but the fact that this happened brings a huge question front and center: Is the former president crazy? Yes, the evidence of a major mental crack up is now a daily reality. He posts dangerous and untrue allegations about a judge's daughter, uh, blah, blah, blah. He is shilling Bibles that include a copy of the Constitution that he is accused of violating multiple times and threatening national security in the process. He can't talk without a teleprompter and he ignores even that when he wants and rambles on in garbled language that alarms mental e health experts all over the country. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, let's get to his supporters. The real thing here is what these things say about what he really thinks about his supporters. He thinks, you know, anyone who vote for, for him, and he's obviously correct, he thinks his own voters are ignorant rubes, and if you happen to be one of them, you might want to pull back and think about that. But you won't a lot of sociopaths and psychopaths throughout history have had rabid followers. Those who willingly drink the Kool-Aid, commit acts of violence in their, you know, their little cult leader's name, and sacrifice themselves in service to their leader. But a big chunk of America? Really? So when we think about this litany of crazy, we have to ask how we got here. It's tempting when writing about these things to insert cynical humor, but nothing about this is funny. This man 
could be the leader of the free world, and he is batshit crazy. Actually, worse, a sociopath is a person with no regard for others. A psychopath is a person who takes pleasure in inflicting fear, pain, and death to others. A narcissist is a person who only loves themselves and believes that everyone else should love them too. You pick your flavor, but realize this man is a danger to himself and every one he comes in contact with and he is out of control. Maybe he has dementia, but I think it is narcissism gone haywire, a man whose ego no longer has any checks or sense of normalcy. In other words, a desperate man, a man alone facing huge legal problems of his own making, a man capable of doing anything to save himself, including committing treason. I know that no Trump supporter will get to this point in this diatribe, but if by chance you do, please think about this stuff because I'm not making any of it up. This is not a conspiracy theory. These things have actually happened and they are happening on a daily basis. This is not right. It should bother us all when we witness the public unraveling of a man, a descent into a place where none of us want to go, a man who has buried his soul and his conscience, a dangerous man. I think the most incomprehensible aspect of all this is how unredeemable he seems. It is impossible to imagine Donald Trump coming out of this abyss when he fails this time in his quest for re-election. What then? Will his followers double down? That is exactly what they will do. But again, uh, we don't have to worry about that because it's not going to be put to the test. Thank you, Joe Biden, for averting the new American Civil War by handing the White House to Donald Trump. But we're going to wind up on Medium.com with Lilith Hellstrom, why I will always hate Donald Trump. He's a terrible person. Okay, uh, let's see. We're going to skip through all of this long opening and just get to who we're talking about here. Donald Trump, as I was mentioning earlier. Donald Trump. That asshole faces zero consequences for any of his actions. Donald Trump breaks the law time and time again, and he doesn't ever face consequences. I doubt he was ever even scolded by his parents. He, meaning Donald Trump, rapes whoever he wants, insults and mistreats world leaders. He steals from people and ruins people's lives. He makes the poorer more poor and the richer more rich. He has a ton of money. He can cover his own lawyer expenses, yet he expects donations 
for all of it. People literally pay his settlements and other legal fees as they have lately. When he gets arrested for a second, he uses his mugshot to promote himself further and never actually spends a day in jail. He is so spoiled that he doesn't know how to close his own umbrella. He was the president, yet he's never read the Constitution. He is a giant baby that has had everything fed to him and everyone, and had everyone change his shitty diapers. Yet, he's had, he has the audacity audacity to complain with a smug look on his face that he has been persecuted against and that there is a witch hunt after him. I know that Marie Antoinette was so privileged that she proclaimed that starving peasants should eat cake, but she did not experience even a tenth of the privilege in catering to that Trump has. We make fun of pharaohs for proclaiming to the Egyptians they were gods. We cannot believe what delusion and conceit such a proclamation would take. Yet, Donald Trump has proclaimed to be Jesus in modern day America to deserve immunity from all crimes and punishments because he was once president. I don't think there has ever been a more entitled individual in the history of Earth. Thank you, Lilith Hellstrom, for that fine summation, but uh, I realize I could go on and on with this. But, uh, I have to call to see if the surveyor uh, is going to make it out to my lot tomorrow before they close while I still can. So, uh, Donald Trump! How many? May, June, July, August, September, October. Six and a half months. Donald Trump, uh, We'll be getting reelected on National Donut Day. And there's not a fucking thing that you can do about it. Bye, guys.